Hey YouTubers, today we have a Maytag dryer that was just found out on the curb. It's actually my uh, neighbors and I asked to see if, um, I guess they were just trying to get rid of it for scrap metal. I asked if it's okay if I took it and repaired it. So we're going to be taking a look at this and seeing, um, just kind of giving it a tune-up, seeing if there's anything wrong with it. And uh, it was left out in the rain for a couple days, so we're going to make sure there's no water left in there, dry it out, and maybe do a couple little things to get it going. So if you find a dryer, this is this is a Maytag gas dryer. This is based on the Whirlpool Series A dryer, which is a really good one. Um, if you find one and you want to renovate it or get it going again, this video will show you how to do it. It's pretty easy to do. So to get into this machine, we're just going to use a paint scraper We'll use a Phillips head screwdriver, and also we have a drive. This is I think it's seven seven eighths drive, and we have some contact cleaner in case there's any water in there. We want to make sure that um, we can get rid of it with this contact cleaner. We'll put a link in the description below for this stuff. And we're going to just test some of the uh, parts with a multi tester for continuity. So first thing we'll do to get into this machine. We're going to get down into this area where the motor is and where the uh, drum and the belt and uh, we're going to take a look at the coils and the igniter, burner tube, just see if there's any water or any rust or any damage inside. So it's going to be pretty easy to do. First thing is just take the filter and pull it out and you're going to find right here and here there's two Phillips head screws. We're going to pop them out. Be a little careful when you do that, that the screws don't fall down into the filter opening. So just maybe have your hand there as you're popping out those screws. So we'll do that next. And that's gonna allow us to get this top panel on. Just got a Phillips head screwdriver. We'll take out those two screws. Better my pocket. Here's another one. Okay, now I'm going to use the paint scraper to push in on a clip that's just a few inches in from the side and then another clip here. And once those are released, I can hinge this top panel back. That's going to allow me to get to a couple of screws here and here so I can take off the front panel. So that'll be the next thing. Let me use this to open up those clips. There's one, push, I pushed in and it pulled up on this side. Pushed in, pulled up. Now I can hinge this back. I gotta, gotta make sure this is away from the wall by, well, maybe a foot or so to give room for the console. This will hinge back. You want it to go back pretty far. Um, because if you're working and it's too close, it may fall back on you, hurt your hand. So make sure you push this back a little bit beyond 90 degrees like that. And there's going to be a couple of screws here and here that we're going to take out. All right, let me take those screws out. So I'm going to get my driver in there. Get that one out. We'll do the same on the other side. Here's the other one. Okay. Got it. Now I'm going to separate these two. I usually use a standard head screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, to get inside here to kind of prime the part. So on these newer style connectors, you don't have to use as much force to prime apart. You can lift up with your thumb on this thing and then you can separate these two and now you should be able to lift off the front panel to do that you have to grab it and lift up slightly about half an inch and then you can pull it back so it's kind of got these hooks that are down in slots so you have to lift the hooks out let's try that so we're going to grab it lift up Go. 
came out. So these little holes here, and these are the these are the hooks that go down in, into that hole. So we had to lift it up. All right. So this is the front panel. This is a foam, uh, or sorry, felt bearing surface. There's the quarters and nickels that are always ubiquitous to uh, the front of dryers. <laughs> we get rid of those. But otherwise, the front panel looks pretty good. We'll just clean it up a little bit. Get that out of the way. We can take a look now down inside to see what's going on. We're going to get that drum out of there. Well, first we'll get that belt off, and then we'll pull the drum out. So we want to get the belt off now to get the drum out, and it's pretty easy. What I'm going to do is just move this idler wheel that way to the right. It takes the pressure off of the belt. Then I can slip the belt off of this thing, the motor pulley. So before I do that, I'm just going to grab it and just turn, make sure it all spins good. So the motor looks good. It doesn't look like it's seized up. It doesn't look like it's rusted. It's moving well. And now we'll go ahead and get this belt off. So push the idler wheel in, slip off the belt. And now I can just take the whole drum I can lift it a little bit and get it toward me, slip the drum out of there. We got good access to the inside. Check out a few things. So, yeah, the motor seems like it's spinning good. This is the idler wheel looks good. There's not much lint built up inside. Let's take a look at a few things. This dryer actually doesn't look very very old, I'd say maybe five or six years old. Then these wheels seem like they're not worn out. They're turning good. It's turning good. There's a little rust built up here. There is some rust on the outside of this motor, but it's just mainly cosmetic. It's not gonna hurt anything. And then here is our flame sensor, we can check for continuity. Here's our igniter, we can check for continuity. Here's our primary and secondary gas coils. And we'll just check them out. But everything looks pretty good inside. I don't see a lot of rust. Pretty much normal what you would you, you would see, except for maybe this build up right here. And that's just not from water touching it, but that's just from being outside and getting the condensation. So let's use our multi-tester now and test some of these, see how they're doing. All right, we've got our multi-tester set for continuity. And on this one, if you touch the two probes together, you can hear a beep. That's a good thing. That helps you to see if the circuit has continuity. So let's test one of the circuits. So we have this one is the flame sensor and that one has to have continuity between uh, the two wires there, the two terminals. So we're going to put one of our probes on one of the copper terminals and then one on the other. And that's good. We can hear a beep so we know that's okay. We can now test this one, the igniter. So I took these two and just pulled them apart. Now, there's two metal terminals in there. I'll put my probes on those to see how we're doing. Yeah, so the igniter's good. Okay, cool. Probably all these parts are doing good. So put that back. We know the igniter is good. And then remember, we just picked this up, so we don't really know if everything's working. We know that works. We know that works. We're assuming that the gas valve is okay. We're assuming that the primary and secondary coils are okay. These are basically like magnets. So you 110 volts coming through here. It creates a magnetic field and lifts up on a pin. It's true of this one too. All right, so we're gonna clean up a little bit. We're gonna put the drum back in. And I'm just gonna pick it up by 
its belt. We have a felt surface here. This goes um, on the back of the, toward the back of the dryer, the back bearing. And this felt seems really good. It's in great condition, it's no breakage. If you noticed that it was uh, split or torn up or kind of ratty, you could just replace this before you put it back. I'm gonna load this back in now. Put it over onto, onto the wheels that hold it up in the back. Back. There's like a line on the drum where you can see where the belt used to go. I'll put it on top. So spin it a few times, making sure the felt is not crimped or bent in. Looks good. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and do the belt procedure, put the belt back on, which is really easy. Okay, we're going to put the belt back on to kind of help me though hold up this drum. I just put my Milwaukee. Uh, attachment case here to hold it up. You can just put something in here. You don't even have to. You can even hold it up with one hand while you do it. But it's best if you can free up two hands by having something hold this up. All right, so to put the belt back on, what I'll do is take the idler wheel Grab the belt. Let's see if we can focus in on this for you guys. So I got a little loop of the belt right here. A loop there. So what I did is I took the belt and I brought it in underneath the either wheel. So I'm gonna push the either wheel to the right and we get this and just push this back over the motor pulley. Okay, got it. And now, uh, before I put it all back together, I will grab the drum and I'm gonna turn it clockwise, just one or two revolutions to make sure the belt stays on. So I'm gonna kind of support it, I'm gonna lift up the drum a little bit and I'll turn it and I'll make sure that the belt's still lined up. If you don't do this and you put it back together and you start it, the belt might slip off. Yeah, that looks good. Go a little bit more. Put it on the front panel and a little brace there for a second. Let me go grab the front panel. All right, I'm gonna put it on the front panel now. Grab that. So I gotta load the drum onto this belt seal. Do that. I'm gonna get my little case out of there. Just holding up the drum. Case out. I'm holding up the drum. I take the front panel, and I'm going to put this bearing, uh, this kind of like a plastic surface, onto the felt piece. Get these coins out of here real quick. Okay. So now I'm going to put that onto the felt. And what I'll do now is I'll lift up about an inch. So you can get those hooks on the front panel. I'm sorry, the hooks on the on the on the frame to go into the hole in the front panel to hold it. So I got lined up. I'm gonna lift, push in at the bottom. This is the only tricky part. The right side I got already. Let me do the right. Here's that. Here's that hook where my thumb is. And this thing 
had slipped off of where it goes into these two holes here. I'm just going to put that back. I'm going to push in and push down. That locks it in. And that hook will go into this kind of square hole right there. Let me do that now. So we got the front panel lined up. We got the little, the little hooks set up. And I'm gonna add these screws back in to hold the top of the front panel. Here's the next one. Start it by hand and we'll tighten them up. Tighten those up next. All right, we'll tighten up those screws. This side. Okay, so that's all nice and tight with the front panel on. And you could just spin the drum by hand, make sure that the belt's doing good. Check the felt seal, make sure it's not crimped over. Seems good, seems smooth. I'm gonna reconnect this modular connector for the door switch. Push that in, as far as it'll go. And if you ever have a dryer that doesn't start, um, could be that the door switch has failed, but they're very easy to fix. I'll show you real quickly how to do it. So this is the top of the door switch, and these are pretty inexpensive. There's just two screws holding it on. You just disconnect the modular connector, and then open up the door. And usually this piece breaks. If you ever want to see if it works right, um, it's not a perfect test, but if you click, and you hear it click, probably means your door switch is working. You can also do a continuity test, but if you determine it's no good, just take out these two Phillips head screws. It'll pop out, put the new one in from the back, and then you can kind of hold it with one hand, add the screws back, tighten them up, put the connector back, and you're good to go. Another symptom might be that if yours has a light, like this one in the back, and you have it plugged in, and the light um, does not change when you press this in. The light should go off, but if it doesn't go off, that switch isn't working anymore. So again, easy to replace. So next thing we're gonna do now, is finish this up before we get to the, the back. This dryer is actually looking pretty good. So we're gonna close the top and these clips are gonna click in underneath this seam. Let's see if anything else we should look at while we have this open. Yeah, we do wanna probably address that rust with a little rubbing compound. So you can see a little rust right here. This is just some mag and aluminum polish cleaner mothers, um, but any kind of rubbing compound will work. We're gonna just put a little bit on a rag and then we're gonna rub that rust off. Again, this is not super critical, but if you can stop rust, it won't get any worse. And I'm not gonna have this dryer outside anymore, so it should not be getting wet anymore. The best thing after you remove the rust would be to maybe touch up the paint where you, where you saw the beginning of the rust and that will definitely stop it, especially if you use something like Rust-Oleum. It's a type of paint that's designed to actually stop rust. Okay, that's done. That looks good. It's all gone. I'll show you guys some of the other ones here. Just take you a minute to do this. Here's some more rust. Here's some more rust here. So let's see, this is again just some rubbing compound. And it comes off pretty fast. 
Okay, so now we'll just close this top panel. Bring it down, it has, it has hinges there in the back. It's really cool. If you ever want to lift the top panel off, you can lift it up off of those clips, but they also act as hinges. I'm going to bring it on down, and then those clips will engage. Push it down, that'll lock it in. Got it, that sounds good. So the next thing we'd like to do is take a look at this console. And we might need to do some spraying with our electrical cleaner because maybe the timer back here or one of these switches might have gotten wet and we want to just get rid of any residual water and make sure everything's working good. So we're going to remove this console next. All right, so I'll put those screws back in. I'm just going to be careful not to lose these down this filter chute. So I'm going to hold on to them, start them by hand. Let's try the other one. There we go. Put the filter back in. You want to make sure these are clean. If they ever get dirty, you can just wipe it off with your hand. If you use dryer lint sheets, these will get like a waxy coating on them. And that'll really limit how well the dryer works. So if you notice that, just use a wire brush, get rid of the waxy coating, and maybe not use the dryer lint sheets. That back in. And next we'll get this console off. So to get the console off, you just use the paint scraper. You're gonna go in on this corner and the other corner. And there's something that, another one of those clips you release. So I got that up a little bit. We'll try the other side. And then we have to lift just a little bit. On the back. There we go. All right. So now we're moving the console. We look good. We have our tech sheet, which is a little moist, probably from the condensation. And we have uh, just some lint and a little bit of dirt, so we'll clean that up. So that goes off. Let's get this one off. That one off. Okay, guys, we have all the screws on the perimeter pulled off, so we're going to let the panel come out a little bit and lift it off. And let us get to some of the parts in the back. That off to the side. And show you guys a couple things. So if you ever have to replace the bulb, not all these dryers have a bulb on the inside for a light, but it's just right there, easy to get to. We're gonna check continuity on this high limit, on this high limit. We're gonna check continuity on this fuse, thermal fuse. We're gonna check continuity on the thermostat. And that's good, if they're all, if they're all looking good, We'll put it together and we'll give it a test. So let's check continuity. So we have a multi-tester. We have that auditory beep when we have continuity. So let's go pretty fast. Let's test this thermal fuse here. And this blows, this white one, blows when um, this gets obstructed and the heat can't escape. It gets too hot in there. And to protect the dryer, this fuse will pop, this thermal fuse. Let's check this one. So that has continuity, that's good. And then there's a high limit right here. Let's check that. Just pulling back a little bit on the, on the connector so I can get to the terminals. Put my probes on there. The upper high limit is good. Let's check the one below it. Yeah, there's one below it. That one's good. So let's just check the thermostat real quick. I believe we're just going to check the out. There's four wires going in. There's two purple and then there's two outside red. I think we're just checking the outside red. Yeah, so everything's checking out. 
Um, I believe this dryer will work now. We haven't even started it yet to test it. So let's put it back together and we'll give it a test. So here's where that burner tube, this is the backside of that burner tube. That flame comes in, pretty strong flame comes up about right here. And then that hot air goes up, it's sucked by the fan in up above here and then that mixes with the clothing as the drum spins and then that warm moist air is then sucked out by a big fan right here and then that goes past the filter there's a there's a long filter in there and then what's left that moist hot air comes out of this tube out of your dryer vent tube so dryers are all about airflow. If this was obstructed, if, the, if that flexible tube was obstructed or there was a lot of lint in there, you could have trouble. But if you have a nice airflow, your dryer should work really good. So we're gonna put the back panel back on. So I'm just gonna set it down and get the hole over the, over the back lined up. And I'll add some of those quarter inch screws back in and line up, line up a couple of these holes. Put this little plate back up here to cover where the power wires come in. I got all the screws back in. Let's do the next piece. All right, we got it plugged in. We're gonna test it now. I'm gonna pop off this little inspection window down here so I can see the igniter when it starts to glow. So pop this off. So I'm gonna look in there and see if I can see the igniter. Let me go ahead and check all my settings. I'm gonna go to time dry near the beginning, 70. I'm gonna go to high heat. And again, I don't know if this dryer will even work. Uh, I've never tested it before, but we got it plugged in. Let's see what happens if we start it. So it sounds good. It's spinning good. <clears throat> Do you have any kind of data so we can see a nighter, a glow? Yeah, I can see a glow. Yeah, it's good. Okay, just turned off, you didn't have gas in the door. Yeah, nice light in there, that's cool. So this is basically the same dryer, this Maytag, as this one. This is a really good dryer. We've had this one for about 25 years. And this is the Whirlpool direct drive uh, series, or just called Series 80. And it's basically the same dryer. This one's just a bit older, but uh, works the same. Doesn't have a light, but we're gonna go ahead and replace this one. We'll take this one down off its stand. We'll hook up the other one and give it a test with some gas. Just wanna show you guys this. We're just doing, a, taking a, the gas pipe, the supply line from this larger one to a, to a smaller one, we're putting on a new adapter. When I remove the old adapter though, check this out. Look at all that pipe dope thread compound that somebody did wrong. They pushed it all in there. So it's better to use the Teflon tape so you don't have that happening. So we're gonna clear that out. We'll put this uh, adapter on with some tape instead. So this yellow Teflon pipe tape works a lot better because you don't get that problem. So we're going to wrap threads there with some of this tape. And we'll put on the adapter. So 
I'm gonna wrap it in the same way that the uh, that the new adapter will go on, so that it tightens on the on the threads as it goes on. Do want it to be a nice tight seal, but this stuff's easier to work with than that pipe compound because that stuff can get pushed in. Even this, even this tape can get pushed in if you overlap too much. So you don't want it to end up in front of the pipe because it can, it can actually cut off some of the gas flow. You want to get the full amount of gas coming in. All right, that's in there nice and tight. Wrap it, make sure it's not obstructing the front. And now put on this new adapter. And that's gonna work really well. Surprised uh, with how occluded that one was that we had any kind of, for the, for the neighbor who we got this from had any kind of uh, gas flow coming in because it was, it was probably 70% occluded. Now we're going to tighten that with a wrench next. Okay, we got her all installed, plugged in, vent tube hooked up. We got it uh, plugged in. We're going to start it. We got it set for time dry, high heat. Let's pop up the inspection piece. Let's take a look inside there. We see a glow. Okay, so we set time dry, high heat. Um, we have temperature, high heat. We're gonna go on. We got the gas turned on. Take a look, see if we get a flame. So we should get a little orange. Sometimes it'll take a second. But you'll hear a click, and you'll start to see it glow. There's the glow. There's the flame, yeah. So this dryer does work. It should burn for about between two and a half to three and a half minutes. Would mean that the coils are, are doing a good job. Looks good. Yeah, nice and hot inside. Very good. Cool. It's got a good dryer here watching our video and please subscribe to our channel when you get a chance and also click the little bell notification button so we can send you uh, weekly videos on all the different ways of fixing appliances around your home and saving you lots of money so thanks again for watching and please also press the like button for our video if this was helpful to you to contact me at the email listed below, which has got the fixit guy at yahoo.com with any of your questions.